Hello and welcome back to the Wii U 5. I don't even have to guess that you probably already know the saddest news befell the gaming industry. Satoru Iwata passed away on July 11, 2015 at the young age of 55. In the current time, people continued to mock Nintendo and the Wii U and called for this man to be replaced. I think it's time for you to please understand why the rest of us respect this man, even if not all of his decisions were to our liking. First, it's important to know that Satoru Iwata was a working man who did not start within Nintendo. He started at the bottom as a programmer for HAL Laboratory. The thing is, HAL Laboratory was on the verge of bankruptcy when Iwata was promoted to its president under help and conditions from Nintendo. This ended up being the true test and proof of Iwata's capabilities in a leadership role. Not only did he turn around HAL Laboratory, but helped the studio's own Masahiro Sakurai spawn both Kirby and one of the greatest franchises in Nintendo's modern history, Super Smash Bros. But Iwata was a humble man, even after proving himself a leader. Shortly after HAL Laboratory's finances were turned around thanks to newly found success working with Nintendo, Iwata resigned to an advisor position. It seems this continued to impress the then Nintendo president Hiroshi Yamachi, who brought Iwata over to Nintendo and appointed him on the board as well as head of corporate planning. It wouldn't be long after that Iwata would find himself once again in a leadership position. Yamachi retired and Iwata would be appointed president of Nintendo in 2002. This time, however, he was leading one of, if not the biggest name in gaming. To the surprise of many who may not have known his accolade of turning HAL Laboratory around, Iwata would then go on to lead Nintendo into releasing its two most successful systems of all time, the Wii and the DS, selling 101 million and 154 million systems respectively to date. This would do more than just line the pockets of Nintendo's coffers with money, but also do what many gamers fail to realize, expand the overall size and appeal of gaming to people who would normally never touch a video game in their life. For the first time, the Wii was purchased by people who barely had any clue how to power on a gaming console, let alone hold a controller. Now they could enjoy video games, albeit family and casual oriented. However, the casual appeal is not to be underestimated, as it brought in many new gamers to the fold who enjoyed what they experienced on the Wii, and naturally searched for more games to play as their tastes slowly grew in complexity. Iwata didn't just bring Nintendo profits like it had never seen before, but also revitalized the entire gaming industry with fresh new people looking for things to play. Iwata would do more than just bring about successful hardware though, but also new ways of approaching the growing popularity of the internet. Iwata would bring about Nintendo Directs and Iwata Asks. Nintendo Directs became the staple method of official news announcements for Nintendo, unintentionally spawning the iconic pose of directly to you and later satiric use of please understand. Iwata Asks would bring a lot of insight into both developers and Iwata's own life, bringing to light Iwata's personality, mostly allowing people to see his more positive behavior in a live environment. These methods of communication were a step forward in ensuring Iwata resonated and connected with both fans of Nintendo and those that developed its games. Unfortunately, like most popular things in life, trends change. The follow-up systems to both of Nintendo's biggest selling systems would see struggle, and Iwata would give himself a pay cut. Twice. The 3DS releasing in 2011 saw a fast start out of the gate, but would sharply taper off shortly thereafter. In order to breathe new life into it, the 3DS saw a massive price cut from $250 to $170, and Iwata along with the board would all take pay cuts to compensate and show their dedication. Iwata took the biggest hit, a 50% pay cut. Not long after, the Wii U released in 2012. It too found itself struggling. Instead of a massive price drop, the system instead maintained its slow course for the next year. During this time, many started to question Iwata, his leadership, and the future of Nintendo. Instead, Iwata went against the one thing most companies go for first when its finances are in danger, layoffs. Iwata refused to lay off employees, citing that employee morale will decrease and that it would not help strengthen Nintendo's business in the long run. It was in recognizing that the course of the Wii U would not change anytime soon as profits continued to tumble did Iwata later announce a second 50% pay cut of his own salary. Iwata took pay cuts twice and valued his own employees more than company profits. While later layoffs would still end up happening at Nintendo of Europe, and Nintendo now finds itself in profits thanks to the success of Amiibo, there was no questioning that Iwata held himself accountable and was a man who understood responsibility. Please understand this man. Many of us may not know him personally, but through his actions we can surmise many things for sure. He was a great man who worked hard and rightfully earned his position, but always cared about the company he led and the people that made it possible. That's it for today. Subscribe for more Wii U content delivered directly to your retinas. I'll see you next time on the Wii U 5.